Attention citizens of the Greater Terran Union. In recognition of the hard work, tireless dedication, and heroic conduct exhibited across this great campaign, which reflects the highest credit upon the citizens of our nation, the Ministry of Public Enlightenment is pleased to make the following announcements. At the time this video goes live, two new state-sponsored pieces of artwork will be available for purchase in your local union commissary. The first is the work of Giorgio Grecu, winner of the 2624 Natasha Fox Prize for Art and Social Patriotism, depicting a midnight swearing-in ceremony outside the halls of the National Assembly. The second is a political map of Earth, crafted by the Union Geographic Society, with accurate and up-to-date representations of the Earth's terrestrial commissariats. Finally, for all those looking for their chance to lead the Greater Terran Union to glory, the official GTU faction mod for Stellaris is now available on the Steam Workshop. In addition to including custom flags, name lists, and all the traits, ethics, and options present in our own campaign, it features an entirely new advisor voice modeled on the late Admiral Larissa Thompson, hero of the Union and martyr of the Battle of Yidru Station. Both this Steam mod and our two new posters have been commissioned directly by the Union Chamber of Culture. You'll find the links in the description below. On April 22, 2089, military space surveillance satellites from nine separate nations began tracking a group of objects that had entered the periphery of the solar system. The arrival of the Tyrum and the war that followed left humanity on the brink of extinction. In desperation, the world united under a regime like none other in history. The government that would become the Greater Terran Union was not founded on any idealistic principles or for the benefit of the few at the cost of the many, but on the overriding necessity that drastic measures be taken to ensure the survival of mankind itself. The steps taken were severe and at times cruel. But three centuries later, when the homeworld of the Tyrum race was cracked apart beneath the most terrible weapon of humanity, none could deny that the Greater Terran Union had fulfilled its oldest promise. Few alien nations truly understood what drove the Union in its relentless pursuit of vengeance, why it had embraced such unrepentant nationalism, such an overpowering military-industrial complex, and at times, an almost tyrannical government. The Greater Terran Union found scarcely any allies as it spread across the stars, only new enemies and later subjects. When the Sword of Terra was unleashed, the galaxy responded with horror and protests erupted across every world. But when the survival of all life was in jeopardy, it was the fleets of the Union that pressed onwards where no others would. It was through the might of Terran warships, through the courage of Terran soldiers, and the complete commitment of the Terran citizenry that the interdimensional rift was closed and the galaxy saved. Again, the great cities of alien nations were filled with demonstrations. This time, however, protesters extolled the virtues of Terran exceptionalism, lamenting the cowardice and failure of their own governments. There were some who believed that the defeat of the interdimensional invaders would usher in a new era of peace and prosperity across the galaxy, one built on mutual trust and charity. The reality was very different. The power vacuum left behind by the Jazgavaz, the Zani, and later the invaders only laid the seeds for future rivalries and conflicts. Foreign powers moved to spread their influence across the devastated regions of the galaxy. The Greater Terran Union was hardly above such political maneuvering, and no less opportunistic. Yet in victory, the Union had earned admiration and respect. For the first time, former rivals looked to it for leadership guidance, and protection. On worlds rocked by instability, corrupt regimes, or conflict, Terran ideals became as valuable as Terran weapons. Political movements rose across the galaxy, and through civil war or revolution, founded new nations inspired by humanity. Some became valuable partners, 
others loyal vassals, and some were annexed directly as new commissariats at their request. In a piece of historical irony, the disparate survivors of the Florian matriarchy were the first among the latter. As citizens of the Greater Terran Union, they were given the chance to begin anew. In time, through the vast efforts of the entire Union, life on their former homeworld was restored, and Garden was named the capital world of the Florian Commissariat. It was the first of many such declarations. On July 11, 2756, Union citizens from dozens of species assembled aboard Triumph Station, in orbit over what had once been the heart of the Tyrim. For centuries, this station and its predecessors had been at the center of a solemn pilgrimage, a place where Terran citizens would congregate to pay their respects to the past and to the fallen. But on the 600th anniversary of the Greater Terran Union, it bore witness to something new. Trigen, daughter of Enim, the first Wasari High Marshal, proclaimed that while the values of the nation she served were rooted in humanity, they were not humanities alone. To be Terran was not the privilege of a single species, something granted simply by birthright. It had to be earned through sacrifice, through loyal service, through the steadfast belief that every citizen had the duty to contribute to the good of the Union and lay down their lives in its defense. To deny any that chance was to betray the tenants the nation had been founded on. A Wasari serving aboard a cruiser of fleet command, a Polenian working to root out corruption in the bureaucracy, a Rixian who donated a portion of his stipend to the National Reserve, these citizens and countless others were no less worthy of citizenship and no less worthy of the title Terran. It would take another century and countless wars, interventions, and police actions before the authority of the Greater Terran Union stretched across the entire galaxy. But with each victory came new peoples and new ideas. Today, on the streets of any Terran world, hundreds of species walk as equals, and all can boast with well-earned pride of the first within their race to earn the highest tiers of citizenship. They stand side by side in the museums of Earth itself and gaze at depictions of the war against the Tyrim, the battles against the Compact, the discovery of the L Cluster, the defeat of the Great Scavenger, the Florian invasion, the Nex uprising. They watch historical footage from the War in Heaven and the final attack on the interdimensional rift and are shaken by the thought that the survival of the Union was ever uncertain. Each night, they stand in the plazas and parade grounds, holding aloft the ceremonial torches of new recruits, who take their oaths of citizenship beneath the statues of the Union's greatest heroes, ready to lead the next great age. Advanced technologies have pushed the boundaries of Terran expansion, and the devastation wrought across the galaxy has left an insatiable need for raw materials and resources. Already, the first probes have arrived in neighboring galaxies, and construction has begun on a wave of starships that will depart for these distant stars. Generations of sacrifice and hardship will soon be rewarded, for as the Greater Terran Union prepares to embark on the next great journey in its history, it marches towards this uncertain future united in purpose and determined to never be caught unprepared again. Every wonder encountered shall be utilized, every terror overcome. And should any force in the universe ever again bring death and destruction to a world claimed by the citizens of the Greater Terran Union, each injustice will be repaid a hundred and then a thousand times over. Every galaxy will know that they came to the wrong neighborhood and knocked on the wrong door. In Stellaris Invicta, the Templin Institute guided the Greater Terran Union into an uncertain future. The journey is now over, but we'd like to thank everyone who helped shape this story either on Patreon, Twitch, Discord, or here on YouTube. Stellaris Invicta succeeded beyond our wildest expectations, and it has been so gratifying to see an original story garner so much interest and enthusiasm. Thank you all very much. The rise of the Greater Terran Union was just one story amongst many, though. Stellaris Invicta will return.
Virtual. Over. Campfire 5. Campfire 5. This is Cortez Actual. Over. Campfire 5. Campfire 5. This is Cortez Actual. Over. <sighs> Nothing. Widen the net and begin to plan reconnaissance flights. We need to figure out where we are. <laughs>